As you guys know, plugins are not cheap. That's why I've made a list of five Final Cut Pro effects that come with the software that'll help you improve your editing game. So let's start with the first effect, which is an audio effect that I use in almost every project. It is called Channel EQ. Channel EQ is a multi-band EQ that allows you to modify your audio, whether that be creating a lower high pass filter, finding where in your audio your levels are peaking, distorting, etc. And what I use it for a lot, which is adjusting the music in my project so it doesn't affect the dialogue from my subject. I'll show you how to do that right after I point some things out so you guys will have a general sense of how to use this effect if you don't know already. So on this right side we have a gain slider which basically adjusts the loudness of the audio. We have eight frequency bands here. With the frequencies you have low frequencies on the left and high frequencies on the right. We can add a low pass filter by clicking this and dragging which essentially blocks the high pitch noises and we can add a high pass filter by pressing this and dragging which takes out the low frequencies say for example the hum of an air conditioner. With these points we can raise the decibels of the frequencies and lower them. We can also fine tune the range to make them more specific. This can be useful if you have a specific frequency in your audio that is a little too much and you want to lower it. Another useful thing to know is that you can save presets. So for example if you do a lot of narration you can quickly access the channel EQ specifications that sound the best when narrating. So here's an example of what I use channel EQ the most for. So I have this intro of a promotional video I shot for a storage company. I don't want the music to drown out his dialogue, so I will put the channel EQ on both the music and his dialogue. I'll open both of the channel EQ windows, I'll press analyzer for both, and I'll find the frequency range in the dialogue that is the most pronounced. I'll head over to the music and lower that same range. This allows me to keep the music playing while he speaks, but it prevents certain frequencies of the music from drowning out his dialogue. So here is before. Hi, my name is Eric Austin. I am the. And here is after Channel EQ. Hi, my name is Eric Austin. I am the founder of My Star. The next effect is a transition called Flow. This is a great one to use with interviews. Basically, it blends two shots together as fluidly as possible. How this is beneficial for you is when you say have an interviewee that maybe pauses too long and you want to cut out those pauses without making it look like you cut anything out. So for example, I'm going to make a mistake right here and here's what it would look like when using flow to blend the cut together. I'm going to make a mistake right here, and here's what it would look like. This transition is not always foolproof though. Because my head was not centered, and in the first clip it was started off centered, then it may have trouble with trying to blend those two together. When in doubt though, put some B-roll over that interview section when the transition doesn't work. The third effect is one most of you probably already know about, and it is noise reduction. I did a review on Neat Video, which is a great third-party plugin that's definitely better than FCPX's noise reduction, but this stock one is still pretty good. For those that don't know, basically it removes the digital noise and grain found in footage. It gives you options to adjust the amount of noise reduced starting from low to maximum. It also lets you add some sharpness to your shot because most of the time noise reduction does tend to smooth things over in your shot. The fourth effect is more of a tool and it's the transform tool. For those that don't know this tool, basically it's like the puppeteer of your shot. Shots. It can control when your shots come in frame, it can control when your shots get bigger, and it helps you to do a little bit more advanced editing like rotoscoping. Even with my YouTube videos, I use the transform tool to drop down photos and videos from above like they're falling. I realize you can do all of this in motion, but for those that just have FCPX, this is a tool that you'll use often. Just remember that if you do use the transform tool to animate something, you will need to press the keyframe button so that all of your adjustments are saved. The last effect is directional blur. This is an effect you can use when panning or tilting or just moving in general to add more motion blur to your shot. So let's say you have two shots. There is a masked shot coming in from the left and you want to help to add more motion into the frame. So I will add an adjustment layer over top of these two clips and I will put a directional blur on top. 
I'll find the point where I want the blur to start. I'll make sure the arrow is pointing in the direction that I'd like the blur to go, which for here is to the right. And then I'll press the keyframe button and increase the intensity where I want it to be increased by pulling the arrow and then back down to zero again so the blur fades out. You can also use this when animating logos. So if you have a logo coming in from the top and it is dropping down into frame, we can add the directional blur to give it some natural looking motion blur. Hopefully I provided you with some new knowledge to Today, or at least a refresher on what you already knew. Do me a favor and press the thumbs up button and also subscribe if you have not already. Feel free to leave a comment or a question below if you have any. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Enjoy your day.